In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this small downdraft sanding table. Now this design is based roughly on one that I built over 25 years ago for my own shop. And in those 25 years, I've never had to replace or clean the filters. And that's because I'm using a polyester felt tube filter. So keep watching and we'll get started on the build. Okay, so this table is 48 by 30. It's 34 inches tall. I've got it sitting on casters so you can roll it around your shop. Um, it is powered by uh, it's a 1000 CFM squirrel cage blower and it exhausts around the back side. But what makes this table great is these polyester felt tube filters. There's 14 of them and Combined, there's 28 square feet of surface area in the filters, so the air to cloth ratio is pretty good. Um, so when this thing is all closed up, the only way that fan can draw air is down through the top of the table, inside these tube filters, and then back over to be exhausted. The bottom of the filter is open too, so as that dust accumulation flakes off, it'll fall into this dust channel. and about every couple months or so, all you have to do is put this dust pusher in the dust channel and push all the dust down in to a dust pan or a box on the other end. And that will be all the filter maintenance you have to do. There's, uh, these filters are essentially self-cleaning. You don't have to remove them. You don't have to um, agitate them, blow any air through them. The dust will fall off on its own into the bottom. Um, I've got these full filter kits available on my website. This table is made from three sheets of three quarter inch plywood. I'm using a, a sanded AC plywood for the bulk of it. As you can see there is 14 filter openings and those filter holes are covered by three quarter by three quarter hard maple slats. That is to keep your workpiece up above um, and allow air to flow underneath it. The fronts of these channels are also open, so even if you cover this entire table with a sheet of plywood, you're still gonna have air flow in the front here that'll be drawn back to the fan. Okay, so I have all my plywood parts cut up, and what I have here is the two bottom pieces. This is the very bottom of the table, and this is what we're going to call the bottom filter sheet. This will have holes cut in it. And then this is the, uh, the very top sheet, um, the very top of the table. Now, these pieces are an inch and a half smaller um, in both directions than the top. So what we're going to have to do is put our good side up on this top piece and we'll take our bottom filter sheet and we're going to lay these holes out um, all at once so we don't have to lay out each sheet individually. So because this sheet is an inch and a half smaller, I've got uh, two three quarter inch blocks I'm going to use for centering. Um, let's get this piece centered. I like to use the blocks as opposed to uh, a tape measure. I think it's just easier to feel the difference um, in these. And then when you get that where you want it, put a couple um, 
Um, so in the instruction uh, shop drawings I have, I have the layout for the filter holes. Now, um, really all you need is a center point of each hole. Um, we know the diameter of the hole. And so I'm gonna lay this pattern out on this sheet and then drill through the center point to mark the bottom sheet. So we are I'll just uh count this over here on the line. Look down and then I go on the line. Then same stop line. And then I make one in, this is the second line, and then the same pattern on the back. And we will mince screens up. Just like that. So now these are, all these intersections are the centers of each one of these circles. So, just have a drill with a small bit here. I'm just going to all right so now we can get started on uh, cutting all these holes which is really the only difficult part of this project okay so I've got the bottom filter sheet up here on the bench and I've got to cut 14 four and a quarter inch diameter holes into this piece and I've got to cut 14 holes in the top sheet. Um, that hole is for this uh, PVC collar and that's going to recess into here. Um, it'll be screwed onto the inside of the plywood. That will hold our filter and give our uh, stainless steel band clamp something to uh, clamp onto. And this seems kind of flimsy right now but once that's screwed to that plywood it'll, it'll be solid. Um, so to cut that hole, I thought I would use a, a four and a quarter inch hole saw. I went and bought this and it's, it's too big. It's, uh, this pipe is actually, um, like four and three sixteenths. It's a little smaller. So the hole was too big. Um, if you want to, you could, uh, use a compass, draw these holes out, use a jigsaw and cut them out. Um, but what I'm going to do is use this template I made. Um, this template is used with a plunge router. Um, I have a 5 8 by 1 quarter inch uh, collar guide in there and then I'm using a quarter inch uh, solid carbide uh, straight cutting bit and that's going to allow me to cut all 28 of these holes exactly the same size and it'd be pretty easy to do. Um, I made these templates. I've got a bunch of them made up. They'll be available on my website. Um, they have a center line here. All you have to do is align that with um, the center line of your hole. There's a couple of uh, screw holes here. Screw it down to the plywood and you can route each one out. Um, move it on down the line and, and continue the process that way. Okay, we're ready to get started cutting these holes. Um, even if you're using this template that I have available, um, I always recommend you um, cutting a couple test holes first. It's better to mess up some scrap plywood than to cut 28 holes the wrong size. So I've already done that. Um, basically you're gonna get the center line of the of the jig here on the center line that you've drawn on your piece. And run these little screws in. first two. Now um, don't try to cut all these at one pass. I usually um, cut through the three quarters of an inch um, about a quarter inch at a time. Just take your time and, and uh, don't strain your router out. Oh and I always uh, like to have the setting table on. Catch any extra dust that might come from this operation.
want that uh, collar to fit in there. Uh, you don't want to pound it in or press it in, but you want it to be a fairly decent fit. And I think that's just about right there. Okay, I guess you guys don't really need to watch me cut all of these holes. Uh, same process, just keep moving the template down the line. We are now ready to cut the holes in the top filter sheet. So we have to remove this three quarter inch spacer from the template, which will allow it to slide in uh, three quarters of an inch farther, and that will help make up the offset between the bottom filter sheet and the top sheet. Now I'm just putting an eighth inch round over on the tops of the holes that are in the top filter sheet uh, to give those a clean look because you will see these holes uh, through the top slats on the table. <laughs> 